Joining us now on the hotline is Mauro Ranallo. Hello, Mauro. What's up? How you doing? Well, as usual, you guys have been uh, doing the right thing and saving the best for last. But as <laughs> usual, we need to make it fast because I am a globe trotter. I am not after anyone's uh, wife or daughter. I'm just here trying to make the action on MMA Chunky Radio just a little bit hotter. So I say TGIF to you, my friends. How goes <laughs> it? MMA Junkie Radio. <laughs> How, what can you say uh, anything about that? Has the UFC ever contacted you, or, or am I on the right path, or is, is there something else coming? Your GPS is way off. Uh, the UFC has never contacted me, nor do I expect them to. They have a great uh, team of uh, talent there. John Anik, uh, one of the uh, nicest, most decent human beings I've come across in combat sports. Uh, deserves every opportunity he's getting. Uh, those fighters and their analytics minds, uh, they, you know, they, they, it's amazing how many MMA fighters uh, are, are amazing analysts and uh, color commentators. So, no, has nothing to do with the UFC, uh, but uh, I wish them well, and uh, that, that's all I can say really on, on that matter. Mauro, uh, you recently went back to Japan for Ryzen, and listen, Pride was the heyday out there in Japan, but right now, Ryzen, I, can we say Japanese MMA... I don't know that we could say it's back, but can we say it's on the right track? Well, it it definitely has a pulse. We can say that, and the the you know the reasons and all the uh, ingredients that went into me going back to uh, Japan to call mixed martial arts. Uh, you know, you talk about a last minute situation. I received a call three days uh, prior. And Frank Shamrock, who also uh, handles my, my business affairs as my uh, manager slash agent, he was the one who put it into motion when he was contacted by the Japanese the people who, who run Ryzen. They used to run Pride. And what made me jump on this offer was the fact that the only way I would have gone back to Japan uh, and worked for Ryzen would be if a certain individual, and again, anyone who knows me in my career knows who he is. I will never, ever utter his name again. The worst human being I've ever come across in my life, let alone combat sports. Someone who tried to ruin my career once before. Uh, when I found out that they were actually targeting me specifically because of this individual and their own problems with him, I said, you know what? I won't do anything for free. But get me on that plane. I'll be back in Japan calling MMA if it's if it's because this guy isn't there and they wanna they wanna rub it in as they say. So uh, for me to go back to Japan under those circumstances was a dream come true. Uh, I enjoyed the event immensely. I think there's potential there to see uh, you know as long as they're Japanese stars, as long as they can cultivate their market and create the next Kazushi. Well, not the next Kazushi Sakuraba. There will never be another Kazushi Sakuraba, but the first. Uh, a superstar of their own for this generation, then I think they'll do just fine. And, and again, I always got a kick out of the, the larger-than-life production values, the, the pro wrestling-esque uh, 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 storylines at times where we even saw that with one of the women's fights. But um, for me, mainly, it was back. It was going back just to, just to right a professional wrong and to flip the biggest bird possible to the, one of the biggest pieces of shit I've ever come across. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> George, I didn't know you were involved with Japanese. Oh, no, no. <laughs> as much as him and I butt heads, no, I don't think he means me on this one. Uh, wow, Morrow, yeah. That, uh, probably feels pretty good to say that, doesn't it? I mean, it seems like you've been holding on to that one for about yeah, 10 years. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing to be able. I mean, again, I'd rather ignore it totally, but uh, you know what? You guys have been good to me, and uh, might as well give you a piece. And, and the fact that I heard, too, he started attacking. He started contacting journalists who were – who were saying things about him on Twitter. I mean, it's just like I say, go away, man. Go away. <laughs> Mauro, when do we hear the, the big announcement? You said two, three weeks, or uh, uh, when does it go down? Well, I don't want to, um, you know, ruin things, but uh, things are in motion right now. And, I, and all I can say is when these announcements, plural, take place, that, that will be it. I will, will have achieved everything I think I... I'm capable of doing, especially in this realm. If anything, I've really started to focus, again, more on my own personal health, especially after my last uh, uh, issues uh, with, with mental health, uh, the relapse and getting into a very dark place. Uh, and, and to have myself bounce back so quick uh, is really just a testament to my support network, uh, to the people who are in my inner circle, and honestly, to, to everyone on social media. We always joke about... Uh, you know, the Twitter trolls, or as I call them, the Twitter troglodytes. And, 
and how uh, the keyboard warriors can, can you know, uh, try to ruin people anonymously. I have felt nothing but love from uh, my Twitter followers, my Instagram, my, my social media, and I can't stress enough how much that has helped me uh, get off the, the mat, as it were, after being knocked down uh, in March. And, and so, I mean, it's always a work in progress. It's a daily battle. But, uh, but in exercising, in meditating, in trying to eat right, and in, in just talking about it. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an open book, as you guys know, and, and I, I, you know, the fact that I'm hearing or, or reading on Twitter people who tell me that I literally have saved their lives by being open, that, that people were literally on the ledge, and then they see that someone they watch on TV who's happy and successful and, and seems to have it all together, if someone like that can be suffering from, from issues that, that maybe not everyone sees, that, that means you're not alone. And that's the thing, we're not alone. I've lost too many people who have killed themselves, uh, and men, because they were ashamed. They, they suffered in silence because of the stigmas attached to mental health. I'm, I'm not going to be that guy. And I'm just glad to see so many more uh, big names, bigger than me, Demi Lovato, who, of course, is a huge MMA fan. She's been a, a huge advocate for, for mental health. Uh, Selena Gomez. I mean, so many. You hear, I'm a huge hip-hop fan. I'm listening to, to Logic right now and, and Wale and all these all these great rappers who, who talk and rap about their struggles. Kendrick Lamar. I mean, mental health affects all of us. And the sooner we smack down the stigma, the better. And that is why the government, I don't care if it's Republicans, Democrats, we need more resources, not less. Because if we lose one more person because they think they don't have help or, or they're ashamed or they're, they, they're just not able to, to, to maintain the struggle, I'm ashamed to call myself a, a human being. Because there's no way on earth that we should not be able to help those who need it. If you are in a wheelchair, if you've got a broken leg or a, a, a broken arm, we see it. People don't understand what people are going Everyone is going through something. But uh, mental health, it's Mental Health Month. Uh, I say keep up the good fight. And, and forget all these announcements I'm about to make. Forget all the amazing fights that I've called. The only thing I want to be remembered for when I finally leave this earth is that I was someone who spoke up and spoke out and spoke for those suffering from mental health issues. Because if I did not get the help I needed, if I did not think that there was someone out there who loved me, I wouldn't be here today. And that's a fact. MMA Junkie Radio. MMA Junkie Radio. MMA Junkie Radio.